Hello best friend and a welcome welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having the most incredible day. This is the first time that you're watching my channel. My name is Sebastian and I welcome you all with open arms. I do pop culture videos every single day honey. So if you're looking for a new messy best friend you have found me. So why don't you grab a snack and a drink. Hit that subscribe button best friend because today we are going to be talking about Jennifer Lopez, uh, 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 Jennifer Lopez's soon to be ex husband's ex wife, Jennifer Gardner. And best friend, I look so preppy today. I look so cute. Me and my knockoff Louis Vuitton bucket hat. Bitch, did you know I had to climb into a dumpster to fucking find? I was throwing, I was, you know, one Tuesday afternoon, I was throwing away the garbage. I had my dog on the leash, right? And I was throwing away the garbage and I saw this hat just like there and I was like, <gasps> oh my God, the Louis Vuitton gods freaking gifted me a damn Louis Vuitton. Bitch, the L is so fucking crooked. It should be like a fully, a uh, fully Vuitton, okay, bitch? But I took that shit out, bitch. I cleaned it. I washed it. And now it's mine, bitch, okay? Um, anyways, girl, welcome back to my channel. We got to talk and guess what, best friend? Story time at the end where I am just going to go off. But before we do, girl, so let's talk about this. So uh, Jennifer Gardner, a.k.a. Mary Poppins, a.k.a. girl, she has too much patience, a.k.a. if that was me, bitch, I would have fucking... Girl, listen. I, I Listen, I have the face. I have the hair, I have the stretch marks, I have the booty, but I do not have the time, okay? Now listen, Jennifer Gardner obviously does have the time because she's been trying real hard to be there for, for Ben Affleck, best friend. And I admire her for that, girl. But at some point, honey, ding dong! Girl, it's dignity, bitch. Dignity is calling and you gotta pick up the phone, bitch, okay? Check this out, best friend. So the title says Jennifer Gardner is done playing marriage counselor to Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez's circus. Girl, not the circus. What in the greatest showman? It says you're on your own, Ben. Ben Affleck has reportedly been leaning on ex-wife Jennifer for support amid his issues with J-Lo. But sources say that the alias actress is done helping. Jen eventually get, got to a place where she was like, sorry, figure this out yourself. It says it, it was beginning to become too painful for her because it was bringing her back to the memories of their divorce. It says that Gardner felt like she was second to Lopez when she was married to Affleck and that she was surprised at how public he became when they reunited. Well, of course, girl, because JLo loves the spotlight, bitch. That's why, girl. And her feeling second and being surprised that Ben changed so much, girl, that that is not... It shouldn't be such a shocker. But it continues to say that uh, Jen opened up her home and her life to J-Lo because she had moved on from the past. She cares about J-Lo and cares about their kids and how it will affect all of them. You see, that's Mary Poppins' behavior right there, bitch. Why the fuck should you care about J-Lo? Girl, what? So, girl, listen. Here is the dealio, if you will. I just feel like in time, you have to... You, you, you can't... You can't allow somebody's issues to dominate you, to overshadow you, overpower you, and to have that the center of your world. Do you know what I mean? And that's why, remember I told you guys about cleaning yourself and letting go of people who no longer serve you? That goes in that too. Sometimes, best friend, you have to let people crash for them to really, really, really learn their lesson because you cannot continue to baby people. And if you keep babying people, they're never going to learn. And it's going to be more work for you, bitch, okay? For real, right? So Jennifer Garner tried, honey, you know, and maybe it did, of course, bring some some, you know, triggering memories, you know, of her divorce with Ben. And that's completely understandable. But I am just so happy that she, you know, that she just kind of decided to say, you know what, enough is enough, right? I'm going to focus on my guy. I'm going to focus on my family. You got to focus on you. Now, there has been a lot of rumors that allegedly Jennifer Gardner is tired of Ben Affleck's decision and that she was allegedly not happy about their reconciliation in the in the beginning but then she got used to the idea and then that you know allegedly she really loved them together and that she was trying really really hard for them to stay together but then you know after some time like enough is enough and then allegedly her boyfriend was getting sick and fucking tired of jennifer garner involving herself in the ben affleck and j-lo situation i the old me your best friend 
You know, here is here is the dealio with that girl. Listen, I just have to say, mind your business. You know what I mean? Yes, girl. Congratulations, Mary Poppins. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. But best friend, this is what in the supercalifragilisticexpialidocious is going on here, right? Um, I'm glad that she's like, girl, you on your own, honey, you are on your own. I am busy raising these kids. I'm busy cooking. I'm busy being Mary Poppins. I'm busy making these Netflix movies. I just, I got to do my own thing, best friend, because, you know, Ben Affleck, he, you know, he is an adult and he's got to figure things out. Actually, Ben Affleck was seen out and about. I'm going to put the pictures here, girl. What in the men in black is going on here? He looks like he is going to a Scientology meeting at three o'clock on a Tuesday where they're going to share a, a fucking Panera bread. Okay. <gasps> Best friend, one time I had Panera Bread and I really liked it, bitch, but they were about to close and that girl was giving me such a fucking attitude and I was like, and I asked her, I was like, oh, are you about to close? You're probably not serving anymore, right? Because I worked in restaurants before and she was, no, it's fine. Like, what is it that you want? I'm like, no, girl. It's, and I said, no, girl, it's totally cool. I can, I can order something from next door. She goes, what is it that you want? I'm like, well, you know, what I do want is for you to stop with the attitude, ma'am, because I'm telling you, girl, I could eat next door. I just want you guys to get up and, he, and go, go home, you know? Because I know what it's like to work at a fucking restaurant, bitch. And she, I didn't say that. And I was like, what I would like for you to do is to please calm down and, and not be so rude. And she goes, ah, oh, are you going to order or what? And I was like, ooh, girl. Oh, oh, my God. If I was your mom, you would have fucking. She was 17 years old, bitch, by the way. I was like, if I was your, I said, man, I said, uh, Young lady, you, young lady, you need to go home. You need to go home and do your homework, okay? I was fuming. Anyways, bitch, I went next door to Buffalo Wild Wings and I got, ooh, girl, I boneless uh, chicken, uh, chicken wings. Ooh, girl, with that honey barbecue Parmesan garlic sauce. Ah, oh. anyways, best friend. Um, yeah, no, that little girl, ooh. She almost made me forgot I was a full grown adult bitch. I was about to curse the shit out of her, but I did not. Uh, listen. Oh, what? I, well, I don't know what I was saying. How did I end up here? Buffalo Wild Wings, a little rude 17 year old girl. Um, Panera. Okay. Okay. I'm getting closer. Panera. And what, what did I say before Panera? What did I say before Panera? I don't remember, bitch. Anyways, girl, Jennifer Gardner's tired of his fucking bullshit, okay? That's all I gotta say about that. Um, best friend, speaking of getting tired of people's bullshit, I have a story time because it is so funny how, like, you... Okay, so you guys love my story times. And I love the fact that you guys, like, laugh about it. And here's the thing, like, maybe when I went through things, I didn't find it quite interesting or funny or amusing. Now I get it, right? Now I look back and I'm like, girl, I can see the fun. In and I also think it's the way I say things but like this was literally like you know what things that were going on with me right and because I'm an overthinker you can imagine how like crazy you know these things were for me but anyways girl I'm gonna tell you story time about when I said I've had enough okay when I said I've had fucking enough now listen when I had enough was this guy that I was seeing right he was so sweet he was so kind but once again, best friend, he had all of these things that he had to work on, okay? He had just come out as bisexual. Girl, he was so gay, bitch. He was coming out of bisexual. So, you know, I was very understandable. I was very nice and very, very good. Here's the thing, best friend. I look back at, like, you know, the guys that I dated. Tell me why, seriously, all of these, like, straight, bi guys really, really love me. And I spoke to this uh, professional one, this, like, love, you know, uh, um, love professional, if you want to call her. I don't really know what it was. it was. She was just an expert in love. And I said to her, I said, why is it that uh, straight guys or straight curious bi guys or whatever it is have always been attracted to me? Why? What is it about me? And they're like, and you know what she said? She goes, the thing is that you offer a safe place for them to really, you know, embrace that feeling and they feel safe with you to be able to experiment. So I'm like, okay, bitch, so I'm an experiment? I'm a safe experiment? Well, bitch, do I get fucking aura points or community service points for this shit, bitch? Because my dumbass falls in love. Anyways, girl, listen. Oh, 
So there was this really nice guy, so, 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 so sweet. And you know, I, well, first, I, I mean, I, should, I shouldn't I should say we were dating. I feel like we were on the verge of dating. So we, this was, this was in one of my first jobs, okay? I had a, one of my first jobs, I worked in an airport and there was this guy who was so incredibly nice and sweet and we had a very fun banter about us, right? And he was just so kind and he was so funny and so sweet again. And I just remember like when we were, we were always on breaks together somehow, like our breaks always matched. So we would go on breaks together. We would eat. He would always eat my leftovers. I would leave them on purpose because, you know, I didn't want to eat in front of him too much. And then I would get home and have to overeat because I was fucking hungry. But anyways, bitch. So, you know, he would kind of eat my leftovers. It's not, and he would always give me like these kind of like flirty vibes and stuff. And I was like, you know, fine. And then, you know, we would, you know, advance to taking the Metro together to, to on the phone together, texting. He would, you know, he would uh, stop uh, in my stop and then we would get on the metro together go to work together. i mean we started doing a lot of things together and it you know it for me in my mind i'm like i'm in love like i was date we were dating well anyways um a lot of things like like these things you know continue to happen you know the waiting and the eating together and the talking together and the this and the that and anytime we would talk about like people that we would like or that maybe we were dating he would get very weird with me until one day he told me, hey, Sebastian, you know, I have something to tell you, um, you know, and I would always have to ask him about like, hey, so any girls, any this, any that. And, you know, he said to me, you know, I have something to say. So, you know, I, I feel that you and I have a very uh, good connection. And I said, well, thank you so much. I, I feel that too. And I remember we were eating and I, and then I remember like, I, I got so comfortable with him that I could eat now and I was not have, giving him my leftovers. The reason I guess I got comfortable because I was like, this is not going nowhere romantically. This is just a friend. So I feel like we can just, you know, be friends until he did, you know, express to me that he was um, curious about maybe possibly dating a guy and that, you know, if I would be into going on a faux date with him. And then I, rem I just remember eating and I'm like, huh? Hmm? Ketchup, mustard, mayo, pickles everywhere, bitch. He goes, a faux, I said, a faux date. And he said, yes, you know, I, I've never gone on a date with a guy, but I feel like it would be really natural with you. And I feel like we have a good connection. Maybe it could lead to something. And I was like, okay. And now looking back, I'm like, well, the fact that he was so open about, you know, talking to me about this, you know, must have been, because he was really, he was very gay pride, you know, for everyone who's an ally, if you will. Anyways, I remember when on this faux date, I don't remember a lot of the details of this faux date, but I do remember that it was in a Chinese restaurant. There was dumplings, there was so much food. And I just remember I was so nervous because I'm like, okay, this is a date. Like this is, this changes everything. And I was probably so awkward on this date. He was so awkward on this date. And it was just a horrible, horrible, horrible date. And I just remember going back to work, you know, uh, trying to kind of forget it. You know, we didn't really talk for a couple of days too much. And then until he told me like, you know, what happened to us? Like, this was a really, really bad date. And I was like, I think it's because you put the word date. You know, I think we both got very nervous. So we, we, we said, okay, let's just hang out. You know, let's just hang out. Well, anyways, we went on a park, uh, like a park uh, walk. And we were on this park walk. And I can tell you like, you know, I was looking at him and he was looking at me like, you know, we were kind of, you know, vibing. And he was telling me about how he came about these feelings that he's always kind of been attracted to guys, but this and that. He's never met somebody that, you know, he could like, you know, this. And he asked me about my story. I said, you know, I've, I've, I've known I was gay since I was like four years old. I, my first crush, his name was Enrique. I told him all of this. He goes, okay, great. You know, this and that. And then, you know, he says to me, Sebastian, um, you know, I've never, I've never kissed a guy before. And at this point I was like, I'm Professor Soto. I mean, I am this man's teacher and I'm going to be like the person who is going to introduce him to the gay world, you know? So I was like, you know, I was like, it would be incredibly crazy that this would be like, because any boyfriend that I would get or anybody I was dating, I would always picture us together forever. That's why, you know, I've, I've only been intimate with three men, including my husband. I've always been very, 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 um, you know, uh, romantic in that, in that level. I, I, I don't judge anybody who does anything. I just fall very easily. 
So I was like, maybe this could be such a beautiful love story. This and that, right? Okay, anyways. So, you know, uh, he said, I've never kissed a guy before. You know, can we share a kiss? I was like, well, you know what? I'm, I'm here. I might as well. So when we kissed, I do remember the kiss was very like, I felt like he was surfing in my mouth. I felt like his tongue was a surfboard in the middle of a tsunami. I don't know what the hell he was doing, what kind of dental checkup he was doing in my fucking mouth, best friend. But I was like, sir, if this is the way that you are kissing these girls, no wonder you think you're bi because ain't nobody want to fucking kiss you like that. So I was in awe. I was just like, you know, and he goes, oh God, that was so magical. And I was like, hmm. It, I, I need mouthwash. I need I need to ask my, my mouth if it's okay. You know, I, I felt like I needed consent for that shit. I mean, it was just crazy. The man was so awkward on dates, so awkward kissing. It was just, it was just not, you know, it was not. And I just remember him, you know, constantly telling me like, you know, why don't we go on another date? Why don't we do this together? Why don't we do that too? And I started getting just these, just these vibes from him. I just could not stand him. That's the, just the truth. And here I was in the middle of help. I was like, I'm helping somebody find them true selves, but I'm also, you know, am I falling for him? I mean, I'm kind of annoyed at him. What is happening with him? So I just decided to, you know, kind of like separate myself a little from him. And I just remember him always like asking me things like, so Sebastian, like, you know, if we ever do make love or, you know, go to bed, like, you know, what would you like for me to do? And how would you like me to get there? And how do you do this? And how do you do, I was like, I, you know, I, I would answer best friend because I felt I felt bad for him, but I was so annoyed at him. Like the whole, like I could not see him. The only thing I could imagine was that his tongue just fucking deflowering my mouth. And I was so annoyed at him at the way that he was just like, Brrr. I was like, bitch, what the hell are you trying to find in there, bitch? There's no lost treasure in there, ho. Anyways, I just remember kind of getting a little bit mean to him and, and ignoring him and just kind of like stepping away. And, you know, I I just got really tired of it because I, I just felt like, you know, he was, you know, I guess he maybe didn't know he was leading me on, but he was just being very selfish in my opinion. And, you know, I, I told him, I said, you know, listen, I've enjoyed us hanging out. I just feel like you have to maybe explore other guys, explore other things. Well, best friend, you would have thought that I went up to his mother, slapped her and called her a hoe. He got so fucking pissed off at me, best friend. His, you know, cause he had braces. I felt like his braces were about to fucking pop, bitch. I was like, ooh, girl, I'm gonna get cuts from these braces. Like I've never seen a man turn so incredibly pissed off. He was red like a fucking tomato. His braces were shivering. I was like, girl, what in the crazy? And he goes, you played me. I was so comfortable being straight. Now I'm confused. Now, because of you, I was like, excuse me. And I just, re I just remember thinking to myself, honestly, I, I do remember this because this has happened to me multiple times where I remember saying, Sebastian, you get yourself into these situations. Okay. You need to stop getting yourself into these situations. And the worst thing is that I feel like for a good two years, I went on about 50, 50 something dates, best friend. And maybe 20 of those were okay. The rest were just things like this, getting myself in situations that I really shouldn't fucking get myself into. Like, I felt like I was Dora the Explorer, but but exploring how to, you know, how to get myself into messy situations. And with him, it was very odd because he was so angry at me. And I just remember feeling so off and so sad. And just so like, I, 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 you know, I'm like, oh my God, I ruined him. He's going to marry a woman, then come out when he's 80. He's going to have five children. He's going to be a sugar daddy. He's going to get, you know, I, I just felt, I, I felt so much responsibility. 
And, you know, I just remember we had, like, an argument. And, you know, things got really weird after that. And he started dating, like, massive, like, just, like, dating, 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 dating. Like, oh, just dating so many guys. I just remember always seeing him, like, leave with someone or, or like, have lunch with another. And, like, you know, I would see him at clubs, like, this and that. And he was just, like, all over. He became such a, 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 a dater, like, but, like, an extreme dater. And then he fucking ended up with our boss's assist, like the assistant manager to our bosses, like, okay, so the boss, right? The, like the manager, then the assistant manager, right? He ended up with the assistant manager, a really lovely girl from Poland named Maya. She was so fucking innocent. You would think that she, you know, she looked like a nanny. She looked like, um, she looked like, you know, that show Super Nanny or whatever. She looked like she was ready to fly, like Mary Poppins. Like she was ready to fly. She was so fucking put together and they ended up together. And she knew that he was like this, like, you know, this. And she accepted him and I was like, okay, well, you know, maybe he just needed to get out all this frustration out he dated a bunch of guys now he's with this girl and that's it best friend but that's one of the dating uh, disasters that i've had and i just you know i just remember the kiss best friend it was just that one kiss bitch i was like you know that he didn't have no right he didn't have no right to explore my mouth like this bitch. he was dorothy exploring my fucking mouth bitch like oh look a cavity bitch girl get the fuck out of my mouth get the fuck out of my mouth sir damn Anyways, girl, that's one of the dating stories. I love you all so much. I can't wait to write a fucking book. Um, listen, I'm a, I'm I'm gonna either have a reality show, a book, or something, bitch. But something has to something has to come from all these years of fucking dating crazies, and I include myself in as one of the crazies because I'm sure I was not a. I have a lot of stories where I fucked up too, so don't worry, bitch. Anyways, girl, I love you all so much. Let me know in the comments below what you think, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Mwah. Bye.